Around 76 million years ago, a genus of large hadrosaurid or nymphopod dinosaur roamed the lands of North America, the Paracerolophus. It was easily identifiable by the large crest atop its head that stored organic chemicals which are used for explosive expulsions of gas via exothermic reaction allowing the Paracerolophus to breathe fire! Wow, 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 wow. That is 100% not true. Who comes up with this shit? Hi! I'm Emma Source, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to tell you about the most insane paleontology theory. Let's get into it. In 1992, Duane Gish, a biochemist and Christian debater, released a book complete with illustrations called Dinosaurs by Design. The successor to dinosaurs, those terrible lizards. <laughs> uh, let me read y'all a bit of the book description. Dinosaurs by Design takes you into the exciting world of dinosaurs to find out what they were really like, discover how fossils are formed, dug up, and assembled for museums. Nice, nice. Travel with the dinosaurs as they board Noah's Ark and then enter the strange new world after the flood. All right. Within this book, he details his theory that the Paracerolophus could produce and weaponize organic fire. And here's how he claims it could do so. <laughs> The bombardier beetle. That's it, seriously. And before you ask, no, the Paracerolophus and the bombardier beetle aren't related, they aren't connected, and there is no similarities between them. Well, the bombardier beetle can do it, and we don't have any soft tissue samples from dinosaurs, so basically, you can't prove that they didn't do it, so yeah. The bombardier beetle has a defense mechanism in which they spray a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone into the faces of predators. This mixture can reach a scalding 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but this substance is liquid, not fire. There, of course, is no biological precedent for any animals producing organic fire. The idea, as he explains it, is that these chemicals are contained inside of the Paracerolophus crest. They mix and combust down and out of the mouth and nose, which, you know, no. We have a pretty good idea of what the crest was used for, that function being trumpeting. It's very likely that the network of hollow tubes in the crest were used as a resonating chamber to produce low-frequency sounds to communicate with other members of its species. This structure is not even remotely compatible with the chemical reservoir in the bombardier beetle's abdomen. Other proponents of the fire-breathing dinosaur's theory have suggested that a fire-producing reptile could breathe out gases that would ignite upon contact with oxygen. A substance that ignites upon contact with air is said to be pyrophoric. When released into air from a container, it only has to travel a few millimeters for the pyrophoric gas to ignite. Okay, let's say a pyrophoric gas is released from the throat of the Paracerolophus. The explosion will occur right in its own face, nose, and throat. For this hypothesis to even be close to plausible, the Paracerolophus would have had to been protected internally by fire-resistant tissue, but no animals produce such tissue. Another theory is that they could have ignited belched methane. Now herbivores do emit large amounts of methane, and they suggest pyrophoric material is gland secreted and then used to ignite the belched methane. But here we are again with the pyrophoric gas. It comes out of the mouth, boom. The Paracerolophus just set its head on fire. Ignition of methane by an electric organ, ignition of fuel by spark produced by friction, emission of a hypergolic pair of chemicals. Either nothing would visibly occur, or they would mushroom cloud their own face. No dinosaur could physically produce these flames, explosions, or reactions without seriously maiming themselves internally and externally. And of course, besides that, no animal, now or then, has ever been able to produce organic fire. Duh. The perversion of facts to affirm religion is nothing new. Now, it isn't my MO to dissuade or chastise creationists. I myself am agnostic, so I don't have an issue with or deny the existence of a creator. What I do have an issue with is a PhD holder, who to those who don't know of him would assume is credible, wrote religious fan fiction veiled as paleontological education. As we said earlier, there was no basis, no connection, and no similarities with the Paracerolophus to the bombardier beetle. So why would a biochemist just flagrantly make something up? In the section where he speaks on the fire-breathing Paracerolophus, Duane Gish quotes this from the Bible. His sneezes flash forth light, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lights, sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke goes out of his nostrils, as from a boiling pot and burning rushes. This passage is referencing the Leviathan, the Leviathan being a monster in biblical folklore. By asserting that prehistoric, or I guess just historic for the creationists, <laughs> that was funny, creatures could breathe fire, he attempts to desensitize you to fantastical biological concepts. If he can convince you that the Paracerolophus could breathe fire, it becomes easier to convince you that the fire-breathing Leviathan exists. If he can convince you that the biblical Leviathan exists, it becomes easier to convince you that what is written in the Bible is fact. And if he can do that, he can indoctrinate you. 
Anyways, all of this to say, weaponize science for your political agenda all you want, but weave my dinosaurs out of it. Depeosaurolophus is my favorite dinosaur. He did not need to breathe fire to be cool. He was perfect just the way he was.